from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. A jury has been deliberating for about two hours now, trying to decide on the punishment due for convicted murderer Edison Karaman. Last Friday, he was found guilty of the March 2020 murder of his cousin, Christopher Karaman. This morning during closing, the defense asked the jury to consider a 15 year sentence, but the state said that anything less than 60 years was not justice. Herman is facing anywhere from five to life in prison. He will have the latest on KSET.com when a sentence is reached. And our court reporter, Eric Hernandez, will have the latest this afternoon for us. Looking outside with live cam, we got a nice day out there. Chilly again this morning, though. It was cool. You know what made it worse was the wind. Yes. Some gusty winds this morning. That put the wind chills in the 30s. Uh, it has warmed up a little bit since uh, we're in the 50s now. We're getting a little more sun than we anticipated, so that's a good thing. It's going to warm temperatures up a little bit more. You see the cloud cover. We do have quite a bit of it as get up into the hill country, but this is high cloudiness, so it kind of scours out the sun a little bit, but you're still going to see plenty of sun today. And as you look back off to the north and west, there's more cloud cover. There is a storm system that will move in tomorrow, but we're just so dry now behind that front. The, the surface moisture is so dry. We're not really expecting much in the way of rain. Let's look at the numbers. 55 here in San Antonio, 47 in Kerrville, 45 in Fredericksburg after a, a very chilly start this morning. Partly cloudy skies for most of us, uh, except for those south San Antonio where we're seeing mostly sunny conditions. Winds still gusting to around 21 miles per hour here in town. We'll see some gusts close to 25 through the early afternoon, and then the winds will calm some tonight. Pollen count, Mountain Cedars High, 4,820. Molds are moderate at 860. And the forecast for today, we'll take it up to about 58 this afternoon. Northeast Julie winds 10 to 20, but those winds calming some tonight and falling down into the 40s. We'll talk about those very, very small rain chances tomorrow and a warm up by the end of the work week coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. New at noon, another milestone no one wanted to reach. Comal County once again reporting the highest number of new cases in a single day since the start of the pandemic. The county says 352 more people have been diagnosed with COVID-19. That brings the total case count to 22,637. As of today, Cullen County hospitals are reporting that they are caring for 44 COVID-19 patients. 10 are in the ICU. Three patients are on ventilators. Approximately 83% of these people are unvaccinated. And we are also seeing more cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County, and that's leading to some changes. The Majestic Theater now postponing all remaining performances of Hamilton. The theater tells us there has been breakthrough positive COVID cases within the company of Hamilton. The Majestic says that ticket holders should hang on to those tickets while the theater works to reschedule the shows. Customers should be getting more information via email. The Bear County Sheriff's Office taking the idea of protecting and serving to a whole new place. The agency offering COVID vaccines and testing to the public. The drive through clinic outside of the Bear County Jail going on throughout the afternoon. And Katrina Weber is there to tell us how people are taking them up on the offer. I was speaking with Sheriff Javier Salazar, and he says that this turnout so far far exceeds his expectations. He says he never expected to see so many people turn out so early on in the day. Now take a look at the line. It goes from inside these gates all the way down the block. Some people started arriving as early as 5 this morning. The drive didn't start until 6.30. The sheriff's office is offering COVID vaccines and booster shots to those 12 and older as well as the hard to come by COVID tests. This is their second drive so far. During one last week, the sheriff says they gave out about 140 vaccines and conducted hundreds of tests. Based on what he has seen today, he expects to top that. We've been doing such a good job of keeping it under control in the jail that we said, well, why not just expand our efforts? If we're gonna be doing testing for our employees and for the inmates, let's just go ahead and open it up to the public. I'm just getting tested just to get tested, just for peace of mind. And then I'm vaccinated, so I just want the booster shot. That's the, that's the biggest thing I want right now, is hopefully I can get the boost right now. This drive goes on until 5.30 this afternoon, and remember that the vaccines are only for people who are 12 or older. Reporting from the Bear County Jail, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Today, the city opening up another testing site at St. Felix College. It's the latest effort to boost testing available in San Antonio, and it's open until 6 o'clock this evening. There are several places that you can go to get tested if you feel that you might have COVID-19. We have a list of them on KSAT.com, and we are updating as new sites go online. And you can use the QR code you see on your screen right now. You can scan that and it'll take you to that page right now. As a reminder, the city is urging people to be patient. There could be test result delays this week, we're told. City officials say the delays are impacting sites the city has contracted through curative and community labs. The results can take up to three days now. Hospitals continue to fill up across the country, nearing a pandemic high with the increase in hospitalizations adding to the strain on already overwhelmed medical staff. Omicron causing a surge in cases affecting several sectors of the economy and schools. ABC's Ike Adochi has more. Today, Chicago students are staying home for a fourth day in a row due to ongoing negotiations between the city and the teachers union. The city's mayor determined to return students to the classroom right away. Teachers refusing to come to work until changes are made. Their union negotiating for a masking policy, a district-wide testing program, and the option to return to full remote learning that could be triggered if there's a surge in COVID cases. Right now, union officials are proposing students begin virtually virtual learning on Wednesday with a return to in-person classes on January 18th. It and hopefully produce confidence that we're not talking about a long indefinite period where schools are remote. But it's not just Chicago, the highly contagious Omicron variant affecting school districts all across the country. 90 schools in Philadelphia will be closed this week, as will school districts in Detroit, Michigan, Newark, New Jersey, and Cleveland, Ohio, among many others. Those districts electing to go back to remote learning due to the surge in the virus and teacher shortages. Yet, many health experts say in-person learning is safe. If people wear high quality masks, even without those other upgrades, which I would like to see, it still is safe to, uh, for kids and teachers to be back in schools. For hospitals, the rapid spread of the Omicron variant straining medical staffs. More than 130,000 people are currently hospitalized, just shy of a pandemic high. The demand for testing also rising, but new reporting suggests the shortage in testing kits will continue. ABC News learning the Biden administration's plan to send 500 million at-home COVID tests to Americans is still expected to be weeks away. Unlikely to come in time for the current surge sweeping across the country. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. The city of San Antonio wants to help people learn more about the COVID-19 vaccine. So coming up in the next half hour, how they're planning to get into the community to spread awareness. And the Cowboys' offense got on a little roll Saturday. They'll need to get on a big roll next Sunday. We'll explain. Coming up in sports. Businesses doing what they can to overcome obst obstacles rather created by the pandemic. But one problem does persist. There aren't enough workers. After the break, Mas Max Massey shows us the effect this is having on businesses now and possibly later on down the road, too. Right now, businesses across the country dealing with a shortage of workers, and San Antonio is not immune to this problem. Max Massey shows us issues that some local restaurants are facing and how we may see long-term impacts. We started uh, with a $1,000 bonus on the service. That didn't bring anybody in. I mean, it was very difficult, and it's still very difficult. Gerardo is the manager of Mi Tierra, and he tells me they are looking to hire a lot of people. In all the restaurants we have uh, uh, from, from the back of the house, front of the house, servers, managers, dishwashers, cooks, just about everywhere. And it's not just Mi Tierra. There are tens of thousands of job openings in and around our community. Today, actually, we have about 46,000 uh, job uh, openings. Uh, since November of 2020 to November of 2021, we added about 50,000 jobs. The latest nationwide job numbers show a slowing in hiring, but also a lower unemployment rate. So I spoke with a financial specialist with Victory Capital. We talked about what these job openings could mean later down the road. What sort of ramifications does an employment shortage and worker shortage have for our local economy? But those costs often do get passed along to the end consumer, uh, so it can lead to potential uh, inflation beyond what maybe we've seen already. You know, we've all been talking about inflation and hearing about inflation. A lot of that's been driven by the cost of goods and how expensive actual inputs have become. 
Now, when you add on top of that labor getting more expensive, it could only further that issue. As for the short term, this new Omicron variant is only adding to our issues. Now we have people calling out every day and um, and it's very, very challenging. Local businesses like Mitiera, they actually have to adjust their hours. Usually Mitiera is 24 seven, not anymore. They actually have to close down at some points because they do not have enough workers. It's great. I mean, just look around. There's a lot of culture, tradition in San Antonio with a place to be at. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Is this low, low humidity, low temperatures, low wind? Oh. Eh. Almost. Oh, I mean, well, there's still a little bit of wind out there, but the, the first two are definitely correct, Harrison. It, it feels like a beautiful January day out there if you take the wind out of the equation, and that wind will die down a little bit later this afternoon. Right now, we're in the 50s. Aquifer didn't change today. It's at 663.2, and then your pollen count, Mount Cedar jumped back up. It's at 4,820. No surprise with these gusty winds. Molds are actually a moderate at 860. We'll talk more about your forecast, which does include some small rain chances coming up. It always strikes me how you know when the wind shifts from the north and it blows and we're in cedar season because you could be sitting there just enjoying your day. Then all of a sudden you don't have to look outside. It's just like, bam, here come the sneezes. Here comes the sniffles. Here comes the headache. And I just Boom. did that right before the show. Yeah. So, so <laughs> that's how I knew mountain cedar, cedar was mm -hmm. back up. It's funny when the report comes in in the mornings, I, you know, we you know, say it in the newsroom and there's always groans. <laughs> We know, we know it's there, but just seeing the number itself is always a little discouraging. We'll, we'll get through mountain cedar season. We're sort of at the peak right now. And always by Valentine's Day, it's typically when things start to wind down. We also need some rain, that's for sure. Uh, you look over the last five months here in San Antonio, October was a great month for us. But after that, it just really dried up. We've only seen 2.33 inches since October 27th, at the airport at least. November, December, and January so far, have not been great rainfall wise and I got to tell you there's not a lot in the forecast so we're going to keep with this dry pattern. I know we can use it and uh, it's just uh, just the pattern's not changing very much for us. As we look at the time lapse this morning had some clouds early. It was a really beautiful sunrise here around 7:45. Oh, well, that's not when the sun was rose, but that's uh, right about the time that the clouds are just really really pretty there. And then you get into the afternoon and we've got some of those high clouds drifting across the sky right now 55 degrees dew point is at 23 so the air is still very dry northerly winds at about 10 miles per hour and humidity obviously very low some of those high clouds continue to stream across generally across the hill country san antonio area you go south of that there's a lot of sun today and that will allow temperatures to get to a pretty nice level considering that we had that front come through yesterday that did cool us down and brought the gusty winds. 50 right now in Austin, 48 Fredericksburg, 54 right now in Uvalde, 56 in Del Rio, 50 right now in Junction. There's like some of those wind gusts. Gusty in 21 here in town, gusty in 24 in New Braunfels. I'd say we'll probably get gusts somewhere in that range next couple of hours, and then these winds will start to decrease a little bit as we get later into today, uh, probably decreasing to 10 to 15 miles per hour by the time we get into the evening hours and then going uh, even calmer overnight. Water vapor showing that we do have a little twist in the atmosphere right there. Storm system that will try to move into Texas, a little compact storm system. Typically that would help to generate some rain for us, but we don't have any moisture to work with. That front came through, right? And pushed all the moisture out. So unfortunately, even though you see on this, the, the radar here, it looks like there's a lot of rain and even snow across the mountains of West Texas. A lot of this is not hitting the ground just because it is so dry. There are some actual showers around El Paso, but looking at some of the observations, not seeing much here around West Texas. And I think this is what we're going to be dealing with tomorrow. Kind of a similar setup with uh, some returns on the radar, but probably just resulting in a couple sprinkles, maybe some very light showers. Look at these dew points in the teens and 20s. That is very dry desert air. So that uh, anything that falls out of the sky typically evaporates before it makes it to the ground. So let's look at the future cast here. In this model, 
does want to generate some showers as we get into tomorrow morning. We'll see. I think it again just probably will be a few sprinkles with maybe a few showers up around the San Angelo Waco area as that system moves through. Still shows a few returns around six o'clock. It's just not going to amount to much. That's the bottom line. Extended forecast. 55 tomorrow, probably a bit more cloud cover tomorrow as that storm system moves just to our north. 64 Wednesday, 72 Thursday, 73 Friday. Those will be nice days, mostly sunny. Then a front comes through Saturday, cools us back down, gives us windy conditions. And yet again, this front comes through without any rain. This keeps happening. We're going to be in a bad spot here pretty soon. So we'll hope things change a little bit as we get towards the end of January, guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Hey, the Cowboys had a record-setting win over Philly Saturday. Now they need to make it mean something against the 49ers next Sunday. And the Spurs came close again, but the road woes continue. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Saturday night, the Cowboys pulled off some history-making moments with their win over Philadelphia. They went 6-0 in the division to dominate the NFC East. It was also history-making for quarterback Dak Prescott. He threw five touchdown passes during the Cowboys' 51-26 win. He threw two to Cedric Wilson in the first half, another two to tight end Dalton Schultz. So all four of those came in the first half. Ezekiel Elliott wanted some work, and he got a lot of it with Tony Pollard back home nursing a foot injury. Zeke rushed for 87 yards on 18 carries. That gave him 1,002 on the season, and he played a lot of it on a bum right knee. The last time Elliott had numbers like that, 10 games ago. The record-breaking moment for Prescott came in the fourth quarter when he was able to find former Eagle, now Cowboy backup running back Corey Clement. That was his fifth touchdown pass of the game. It gave Dak 37 for the season, breaking Tony Romo's record of 36, second back set back in 2007 and even though there was more game this season Prescott played in 15 and a half games the same as Romo when he set the record um yeah I mean pretty cool I mean pretty cool to, to, to get a record like that I mean obviously knowing who, who who's come before me and who's the hit play play the quarterback position here before me um I'm just the beneficiary of uh, a lot of a lot of hard work, great play calling, um, offensive line protecting, a bunch of different guys making plays. So um, j just a just a stat to be honest with you. It was a wild finish to the regular season with playoff spots. The seedings on the line for Seahawks and the playoff bound Cardinals. Russell Wilson and three touchdown passes ran for another. Rashad Penny added 190 yards rushing and another TD. Seahawks win at 38-30 over Arizona. And that's a big deal in this one because the Cardinals have now lost four of their last five games going into the playoffs. The other important matchup, Niners at the Rams. L.A. was up 24-17, less than 30 seconds to play. Jimmy Garoppolo finds Juwan Jennings, 14-yard touchdown, headed to overtime, tied at 24. That's when Robbie Gould kicked the field goal to give San Fran the lead. And then Embry Thomas was able to pick off the Matthew Stafford pass and wrap up the win. Niners had to win to claim a playoff spot. They did it 27-24 in overtime. And with the 49ers win and other things that happened yesterday, the Cowboys ended up the third seed. So here's the Cowboys matchup for the first round wild card weekend. So San Francisco gets a six seed, Dallas number three seed, Sunday 330 AT&T Stadium. So here's what it looks like in the NFC. There's the Eagles and the Buccaneers Sunday at noon. There's the Cowboys and 49ers Sunday at 330. Cardinals and Rams on a rare playoff Monday night game. That'll be fun. 715. Packers get the first round by. In the AFC, it's the Raiders and Bengals, Saturday, 3.30. Pats and Bills, Saturday evening. Steelers and Chiefs, Sunday evening. First round bye goes to the Tennessee Titans after they beat the Texans yesterday. All right, Spurs still missing a lot of guys due to COVID yesterday, so rookie Joshua Primo got his second straight start. Spurs take on the Nets in Brooklyn. San Antonio on a two-game losing streak. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, helps get San Antonio off to a good start on the road, scoring their first 12 points, 12 and 11 in the first quarter. But both teams were tied at 32 after one. But in the second quarter, the Nets found some separation, outscoring the Spurs 28-19. They led 60-51 at the half. San Antonio started rallying the third. Brent forwards with a step back three and a foul. Free throw is good. That's a four-point play. Spurs down seven and less than a minute to go. Devontae Kaycock with the steal and the slam. Spurs down two. San Antonio closed the quarter on the 18-7 run. Trailed 89-91 after three. Both teams traded huge baskets in the fourth quarter, but Primo came up with the Spurs' biggest shot, hitting the three with under a minute to play in regulation to tie the game at 113, eventually force overtime. It was tied at 119, but Kevin Durant finds Cam Thomas 
He hits the game winner. 1.7 seconds left. The Spurs' last second shot. The attempt was blocked, so they didn't get it. And there's your final, 121-119. San Antonio now 15-24. and 24. The Spurs have lost six of their last seven after winning three in a row. Primo loved the opportunity to learn against some of the NBA's best players, though. And the Spurs schedule, they wrap up this brutal seven-game road trip tomorrow night at New York. Actually, that'll be tonight at New York. So mark that on your calendar. They're playing tonight. And then it's Cleveland, or it's Houston at home, Cleveland at home, and the Clippers at home. So that'd be nice to be home for a while after being gone for seven. Being brutalized long. on the road. It'd be nice if they could win against the Knicks. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. A new movie cracked the box office chart this weekend. Was it able to steal Spidey's crown? Estimates for the weekend top five in your next half hour. And with a surge in COVID-19 cases, the city wants to make sure people have the information they need when it comes to vaccines, how they're hoping to reach folks this week. The city's trying to share information on COVID-19 vaccines and dispel misinformation. So the city's health department team is canvassing neighborhoods this year with Omicron cases surging. The team says it's critical to continue reaching out to the community and talking to residents who live near vaccination clinics and in neighborhoods that have lower vaccination rates. Tiffany Huertas has a look at what the team's plan looks like this year. Today we're strategizing uh, what we're going to do the rest of the week. The city of San Antonio's community health and prevention team gathered at the Benavides Learning Center in the West Side Monday morning to discuss ways they will provide COVID vaccine information to the community. We've seen a lot of uh, a lot of reaction from people, people that have, haven't heard about the vaccine or where to get it. Last year, they went door to door to provide information. But this year, the team will be handing out flyers to people walking in the streets. Every time we have a clinic set up, um, like one of our mobile clinics, it's our job to kind of go out and march the streets and make sure that we put a flyer in everybody's hand who does not have a, a vaccine. Nathaniel Gonzalez joined the team in 2020 and says when canvassing, they try to answer as many vaccine questions as possible. Is it safe? Which ones do we have? Um, you know, is it one shot, two shots? Uh, what are some side effects, some of the symptoms that, you know, I can I can expect to feel once getting it? The team will be canvassing neighborhoods later this week. The goal? is to hand out more than a thousand of these flyers. The people that have not gotten vaccinated, their biggest thing, a lot of them, is they want to wait and see. Nathaniel is thankful he can be part of something impacting so many lives. It's a good feeling to, to be able to go out into your community and help them and, and you know, provide a resource that, that they probably need. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Domestic airlines canceled more than 1,300 flights yesterday due to COVID. Thousands of flights have been canceled since Christmas when the Omicron variant started to ramp up. The rapidly spreading infection has also impacted the cruise industry. Royal Caribbean canceled four voyages Friday and Norwegian canceled eight earlier last week. So far, airlines have canceled more than 700 flights for today. That number doesn't include those that have been delayed. Taking a look outside with live cam. Sure could use some rain about now. Um, Everything's starting to brown up. Feels that way. And it, you're right. It's been such a long time since we've seen any significant rain. There's a little bit of a chance tomorrow, but it doesn't it doesn't look great for accumulations or anything like that. I want to start with a picture on our KSAC Connect. This looks kind of eerie, honestly. These were the clouds this morning. And once the sun came up, it was a beautiful sight. Uh, Yvonne sent this in. And uh, that is a cool shot of the clouds uh, coming through. Uh, and those did clear out pretty quickly, but now we're left with some high clouds. Yvonne, thank you, as usual, for sending in those great pictures. Let's look across the country right now. There are some cold temperatures, but the really cold stuff is up there around Minneapolis and northern parts of Minnesota. Negative 1 in Minneapolis, negative 12 International Falls. Chunk of cold air It's going to be moving southeast. We, of course, just get sort of a glancing blow here. Temperatures are in the 40s and 50s for us. So not bitterly cold, but on the chilly side, especially this morning. 49 Waco, 55 here in San Antonio right now. We're getting enough sun to boost those temperatures a little bit. Still some 40s out west where there is plenty of cloud cover. Wind gusts, still some winds from that front that to move through yesterday. Gusty winds, especially across deep south Texas. But we're still feeling some of it here. Gusts to 20 miles per hour, 21 miles per hour here in San Antonio. 
We are still showing some returns out across West Texas. None of this is reaching the ground. The air is just too dry, but this storm system will be moving in our direction tomorrow. What does that mean? Just more cloud cover and maybe a few sprinkles. That's it. As for the rest of today, we'll go partly to mostly cloudy skies up around 58 this afternoon. Northeasterly winds 10 to 20 and gusty, but dying down some this evening. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Overseas now to the tension between Russia and the West over Ukraine. Talks today between Russia, the U.S., and European officials aim to reduce those tensions and deter Putin from invading Ukraine. However, as ABC's Ian Panel explains, the nations don't appear to be making progress. It's a week of critical diplomacy to try and resolve this standoff between America and Russia over Ukraine. In echoes of the Cold War, the Kremlin still sees Ukraine and other parts of Eastern Europe as part of its own sphere of influence and a critical buffer against NATO. Moscow believed to be amassing around 100,000 troops on the border. When we visited Ukraine last week, we visited the front line where Russian-backed separatists have taken over the east of the country and tensions are high. President Putin making it clear he's ready to use those troops if his concerns aren't met. And President Biden making it clear there'll be massive consequences if he does, which could involve more U.S. troops being deployed into Europe and severe sanctions. What Moscow says it wants, it guarantees Ukraine won't become part of NATO, that U.S. troops pull back from countries near its own border. But the U.S. saying no to troop reductions, insisting that every country has the right to choose which alliances it joins. But notably, Secretary of State Blinken speaking to George Stephanopoulos on this week, saying that the U.S. is open to discussing limits on missile deployments and troop exercises. So I think the question this morning is whether there's enough common ground to stop a diplomatic crisis turning into a military one that wouldn't just threaten Ukraine, but Europe, and likely drag America in. For now, both sides taking a tough stance and playing down the chances of any kind of breakthrough. And in many ways, Vladimir Putin may already have got much of what he wants, which is America's attention and a seat at the top table. Ian Panel, ABC News, London. Ohio Representative Jim Jordan appears to be refusing a request to meet with the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol riot. He sent the committee a four-page letter yesterday saying he has, quote, no relevant information, end quote. Though Jordan's letter does not specifically state he's refusing to cooperate with the committee, its tone appears to indicate he does not intend to. Lawmakers on that committee want to talk to him because he sent a text message to then White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in the lead up to the chaos on January 6th last year. The committee says it'll respond to Jordan's letter in the coming days, which could include a subpoena. Greenhouse gas emissions appear to be rebounding faster than the economy. An analysis shows those emissions increased about 6% from 2020 levels last year, but 2022 did see lower levels than usual due to the pandemic. And even with the spike, last year's greenhouse gas emissions were 5% less than 2019 levels. Part of the reason emissions went up faster than expected in 2021 was because many power plants switched to burning coal because natural gas prices increased. At least two tornadoes touched down in the Houston area over the weekend. Those storms bringing high winds and heavy rains, damaging homes and businesses and causing flooding too. National Weather Service officials are saying most of the damage from the storms that went through on Saturday night was in Harris, Montgomery and Liberty counties. A weather Service official says a tornado touched down in Umbo while another one was confirmed in Montgomery. Officials are still surveying the damage to other areas to determine if there were other tornadoes there as well. We want to turn now to the latest on the tragedy out of New York City, where 19 people have died at a massive fire that broke out in a Bronx apartment building. Nine of those victims, children. Just heartbreaking. Right now, 13 other people are in the hospital. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest from the devastating scene in the Bronx. At least 19 are dead, including nine children in what officials are calling the deadliest fire in New York City in more than 30 years. Fire is on the third floor. 
of a one nine story occupied MZ. The flames breaking out in this high rise Bronx apartment building Sunday just before 11 a.m. An open apartment door allowing the thick, heavy smoke to rapidly engulf all 19 floors. My kids is screaming, say fire, fire. So I told you, everybody get out. Over a dozen still fighting for their lives after the smoke from the fire quickly spread. More than 200 firefighters rushing to save those who were trapped. Many of them of their oxygen tanks were on empty, uh, but instead of turning back and exiting the building, uh, they pushed, pushed through, through the smoke. Many residents even jumping into action themselves to help their neighbors. I told you, you're not safe in your house. Come into my house. We went inside my bedroom because it was better for us to breathe. It was just all about help, whoever you can help. It got to a point where it was just so much black smoke in the house. We could barely see each other. Officials say a space heater ignited a mattress in a third floor apartment causing this tragedy. Now authorities are investigating the building. So far, they say it appears there were no known issues. A main focus, that open door. In 2018, the city passing a law mandating self-closing doors in all apartment buildings. We're going to go through this building. We're going to go in, use this as an example of how do we fix this so it doesn't happen again. And dozens of families are now left without their homes. The governor organizing a victim's fund to help them secure housing and move forward. Rena Roy, ABC News, The Bronx, New York. Spider-Man No Way Home took first place at the box office for the fourth, fourth straight weekend, passing another major blockbuster on the all-time domestic chart. We have details coming up. And another superhero is making his way to the small screen. What the cast and director hope to accomplish with the new project after the break. Hello, everyone. This is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar News. Royal Caribbean Cruise Line announcing they're pausing some of their operations due to the number of rising Omicron cases. The company postponing the return of their Vision of the Seas cruise to March the 7th. They're also pausing the return of three of their other cruise lines as well. This marks the first major cancellations for the company since the summer. Meanwhile, GM announced over the weekend they have now agreed to recognize California's authority under the Clean Air Act that to set vehicle emission standards. They wrote a letter to California Gavin Newsom about this. The move will now allow California California to consider GM for fleet vehicle purchases. And investors predicting that this year could be a comeback year for Uber. Asset management firm Needham is naming the stock their top pick for the year, but they are lowering their price target slightly from $77 to $75. Uber expects their fourth quarter to post an adjusted EBITDA somewhere between $25 and $75 million. That would mark the second quarter of profitability for the ride-sharing company. And the Chichetto News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Pachado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. John Cena reprises his role from the Suicide Squad in a new series on HBO Max. CNN's Rick Damagella has a preview. What superhero are you? Peacemaker. Get out of here! There's no superhero called Peacemaker. Dude, I'm famous. After surviving the events of the Suicide Squad, John Cena's Peacemaker is on a new mission. Why are you in your costume? <laughs> costume. This is a uniform, and it's brand new, so I gotta stretch it out, make it more comfortable before we go on a mission. If you watch the Suicide Squad and then watch four episodes of Peacemaker and say this guy has no more dimension, uh, we've we've made a bad show. So I'm, I'm glad that we've achieved our objective, and I hope audiences uh, feel the same way when they watch Peacemaker, because that's when you get eight episodes to dive into a character, that you, you better reveal some dimension. Who's the guy that's peeking out behind the trash can? Vigilante, he's trying to be helpful. <laughs> I have wanted to play in television for a long time. I haven't had the opportunity, but you know, in when you make a film, the king is plot. Everything has to move forward from one scene to the next. You have to keep things moving. But in television, the king is character. So character is what I focus on anyway. This is hardcore. Be a hand in the field. I grew up uh, doing gymnastics. I was a competitive gymnast as a kid. And so I, I've always 
wanted to be able to find a role that melded my athletic ability with my love for acting. And this role did that for me. And it, it's just been incredible. Two jerks in costumes and a couple of rejects. It's like a real team out there. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. There's no stopping Spider-Man No Way Home, which made $33 million to top the chart for the fourth straight week. That put the film's domestic total at $688.8 million, passing Titanic for number six overall. Sing 2 has found its groove in second place, $12 million to put the animated musical at $109 million domestically. The action thriller, the 355, premiering in third place, chasing down $4.8 million. And $3.3 million put The King's Man in fourth place. American Underdog fell to fifth place, scoring $2.4 million. Outside with Life Cam, so if Spider Man was going to like web between some buildings in downtown San Antonio, he might get thrown off course as windy as it is. You know what I'm saying? He might have to, you know. That's a scenario I never would have thought of. So you brought it up, David. There you go. That's a very good point. Uh, yes, you'd be right. A little gusty today. Uh, 55 degrees so far, the, the high. 44 was the low this morning. You know, it's going to be a pretty average day. Uh, and we'll see uh, the temperatures make it up probably into the upper 50s. The records are 86 and 17 set back in 1963 and 1962. We'll talk about the rest of the work week's forecast and a look back at an event last year coming up. A dangerous stretch of highway here, uh, having some troubles. This is the 281 southbound lanes right as it's about to hit downtown, heading into downtown to 35. That's that exit right there at uh, Grayson and 35. And you can see there's a car, looks like it spun out in the exit lane, so now all the traffic has to be diverted down the highway, and that's a mess. Yeah, there's only two lanes open, the far left lanes, one of those heads uh, northbound on I-35, so real congested. I imagine if we could see a shot further north, that you would see a mile or two of cars. All right, Justin, a lot of wind out there, a lot of um, mold and cedar out there. When's it we going just, away? Yeah, we need a break. We do. We are in the thick of cedar season. Uh, numbers came down a little bit this weekend, but they jump right back up today. I would imagine they're going to stay fairly elevated the rest so, of this week. So if it would just have a nice big rain, that would, that would wash help. all that, of it out. That would help. Always does. And it's not a forecast <laughs> to be the bearer of bad <laughs> news. It's not. Uh, but let me take you back one year ago today. You guys remember this? This was in Kenya Lake. Snow was coming down. Yeah. This is sort of one of those forgotten snowstorms because we had the big freeze in February. We kind of forgot about this one. But a year ago in January, we did get some snow around here. Not a lot here in San Antonio, but you go north of town, you did run into some snow. This was out of Canyon Lake. Great shot there. Uh, near four inches in Austin. This was a shot along I-35 near Buda. You can see the snow there. They got a, quite a bit of snow in Austin and again, just north of town. But San Antonio International did report 200 of an inch. That was one year ago. Uh, today, we're not dealing with any snow. Uh, lows this morning were in the 30s and 40s. Not even down to freezing here, 44 degrees. But it was chilly because we had those gusty winds this morning. It made it feel like it was in the 30s in a lot of spots. 35 the low in Fredericksburg this morning, 43 New Braunfels, 44 in Gonzales. We have since warmed up into the 50s here in town, 55 degrees at the airport, 57 Stinson, 55 Kelly, 55 at Randolph. And we've got a north and northeasterly wind right now, anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. 51 Canyon Lake, 55 in New Braunfels. We made it up to 57 Stinson, 59 Pleasanton. I think we're going to see the numbers be a little cooler up to the north. Uh, because we do have more cloud cover up here, a little less cloud coverage goes south of San Antonio. 55 Carrizo Springs, but uh, little 50 still Fredericksburg, Kerrville, and Junction. Dew points are awful low. The air is extremely dry. Desert air is what we'll call it with dew points in the 20s. And this is going to keep us from really getting any rain chances tomorrow. It's, it's unfortunate because we do have a, a decent storm system trying to work in, but it just does not have any moisture to work with at all. Wind gusts right now gusting to, again, 15, 20 miles per hour. So those winds will slowly come down to about, uh, I'd say, to the 5 to 15 range tonight. Maybe some gusts still up around 15 miles per hour or so by the evening. But the, the winds really will calm overnight. So we'll see less of that wind. 
The uh, satellite and radar here as we look out over West Texas does show what looks like quite a bit of rain and snow, but it, it's it's not. It's not reaching the ground. They have the same problem that we're dealing with here where the, the air is extremely dry at the surface. So a lot of this is evaporating before it hits the ground. This is that storm system I was speaking of right now over the sort of the El Paso area, a little spin right there. That's going to be moving almost due east. And normally that would give us a chance for rain, but it's just not in the cards because of that dry air. So you look at the future cast and yes, this model does show a few showers tomorrow morning. I'd say that'd be nothing more than a couple of sprinkles. If that uh, midday, same story and by the evening hours, still some light returns. If we do see anything at all, it's just not going to add up to much. It will bring a lot of cloud cover though tomorrow. We'll call it mostly cloudy 55 degrees 64 Wednesday. 72 on Thursday, 73 Friday. Some pretty nice days to round out the work week with mostly sunny skies. But we get another front on Saturday. This cools us back down again. And unfortunately, no rain with this front either. Just gets windy and we get some more chilly temperatures by Sunday morning. We'll be right back. Rise and shine. SA Live set us up for success today with some great food and coffee. And it is Mad Science Monday, oh, no. so they're cooking up something fun. Hey, Mike and Fiona. <laughs> How are hey ya? There. Yes, well, you, you need to grab breakfast on the go. We've got Matt Sadev, owner of the Bur uh, Baked Bird, is here with the perfect meal for us to start your day. Well, we are a scratch-made breakfast truck, guys. We're, we're making everything but the chicken and the pigs here. We've got <laughs> biscuits, uh, English muffins, um, scones, pastries, all from scratch. How many eggs do you go through? We go through probably about five, 600 eggs a week. Okay. Um, as you can see nice. here, we're working Fiona. on practicing our one-handed crack. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> all right, we are gonna be making up some great breakfast and also some really good fresh baked cinnamon rolls and all sorts of goodies. You need coffee to wash it down too, right? <laughs> this is perfect on a Monday. We check out another perfect Pick me up place. Our Java Jen stops by Shine Coffee. And our dear friend Andrea Cook with Mad Science of Austin San Antonio is here. Yes. Straws and ping pong balls, huh? Yes, let's achieve some lift. So just blow through there, fast moving air. Wow! Run the gas really. Well, we got gravity too. So, so. we are talking about who is this? Bernoulli's? Bernoulli's Yay. principle. We need a lot more practice. She's got it. She's got it down. Teach some old dogs new <laughs> tricks and ready to get fit. How about a million? Push-ups. Oh, we are going to tell one? you how folks are stepping up to the million push-up challenge. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.